meditate on Sri Ramakrishna for the peace and happiness of the whole humanity. Hari Om Tat Sat Om Stavakaya Chadamasya Sarvadharma Swarupine Stavakaya Chadamasya Sarvadharma Swarupine Avatar Varishthaya Rama Krishna Yate Nama Asatoma Sat Gamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Pratyorama Mritangamaya Om Shanti 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 Let us bow down to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions, the Supreme God incarnate. Let us pray to Him to lead us from the unreal to the real, to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, to lead us from death to immortality. We have been reading passages from the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna and I am picking up certain topics from the Master's teachings and trying to explain the spiritual ideas. The topic which I started in the last class was the role of religion. It's a very common word used by all the people all over the world. Religion is so much popular, just as God, the word God is very popular. I have seen people now and then for everything they are talking, oh God, oh God, like it means nothing. It's not that they are uh, invoking uh, the blessings of God. Just in a casual way they talk about God. In the, sa- in the same casual way they talk about religion. But Sri Ramakrishna has shown to us religion means expressing your divine nature. To realize your identity, spiritual identity, to know who you are. So, religion not only shows the path towards the spiritual goal, at the same time it lays certain disciplines to be practiced in order to realize the goal. That means religion always is meant to be practical. Then only religion has meaning. Without practicality religion means nothing. It is simply a word. But Sri Ramakrishna came to show that religion is the manifestation of the divinity. It is in every one of us. But for some reason or other, we are not able to be awakened to that reality and we are just heading on towards the world, seeking happiness in a wrong place. No doubt people are struggling to get happiness, it is true. But they are trying to get happiness in a wrong place. Real happiness one can get only through the realization of one's own innate divine nature. 
So once he realizes that uh, nature within himself, then he gets complete fulfillment. And everything is joyful. And he loves the whole creation. He loves everything. That is the test of realization. A person who has realized the truth loves everything in this universe. He doesn't hate anybody, any being, anything, because he has realized that everything is part and parcel of the Divine Consciousness. And it is that Divine Consciousness is pervading the whole creation, which is eternal. Whereas the matter is continually changing. Our body continuously changes. All our external things keep on constantly changing. So, how can you expect happiness in this changing phenomena? You can experience happiness only in the source. The real happiness you get only when you go to the source. So, looking from this point of view, the appeal of religion is always to the limited few. There may be thousands talking about religion, but in practice very few people do take it seriously. And it is to those people God reveals and people uh, become blessed. Then only one gets fulfillment in human life. Well, so the appeal of religion is always to the limited few. And this in spite of the fact that the province of religion is so vast and the rewards it offers are so lasting and valuable. Over wide areas of the world, large communities of men and women carry on without bestowing any thought on religion and their duty to it. There are certain factors which conduce to the growth of the religions, the growth of the religious sense in the human being. One must cultivate that from the perceptible age. Parental influence is an early and effective factor. That's why in our Hindu tradition, the parents give utmost attention to the child. They want the child to become devoted, to become selfless, and they want to train the child in that line so they take all measures to see how the child gets training. So, parental influence is very important. But we find today the parents are little concerned about the children's spiritual welfare. Of course, there are here and there some parents taking care of the children and leading them in spiritual ways. The education 
imparted to impressionable youths is a great molder of upright character and healthy outlook. So, in order to be effective in religion, you must be firmly established in good quality. This is from Vekanda always emphasizing formation of character. All the human qualities must be completely manifested and then you must rise from the human level to the divine level and try to manifest, cultivate all the divine qualities. That means the ethical and moral values must be strictly and thoroughly practiced. Then only uh, the religion bears fruit. So, from that point of view, religion is the innermost core of education. So, religion must be centered point in imparting education to the children. But religion must be given in a proper way. But the education now imparted in our schools and colleges is just not education, whatever else it may be. They are learning, no doubt. But learning what? Through that learning, do they get fulfillment in life? Through the type of learning, are they able to realize God? Are they able to realize their divine nature? No. This type of education will never take you towards spiritual fulfillment. So, we find so many people uh, talk about religion in a very loose way and uh, they just don't care about it. And for most of the people, religion has been with politics. In the name of religion, people quarrel, fight, kill. Everything that is irreligious, they are doing in the name of religion. So, on account of these factors, we find religion suffers immensely. The few scintillating observations of Swami Vivekananda on the theory and practice of religion will come as a refreshing new light to those who yearn for honest religion but do not know the way to it. And Swamiji declares how religion should be practiced, in what manner you should look into religion and how you should adopt it in your life. Religion must be practiced in your daily life. Not occasionally. Every day, every moment must be used up in a spiritual way. Then you are really practicing religion. So Swami Vivekananda says that we have to introduce the worship of the great saints, those great souled ones who have realized the eternal truths are to be presented before the people as the ideals to be followed. So, through the thunder roll of the dignified Vedic hymns, life is to be brought back. The whole spiritual glory is in the Vedas and it is for us to highlight these ideas, make the people know the ways of getting real happiness in religion. 
that's why we are holding the millennium conference focusing our attention on the teachings of vedanta the philosophy of veda vedanta is the philosophy of the vedas we are just highlighting that let the people know what is what the first step at least they will be able to know that here is a religion which is opening the flood gates of happiness flood gate you are just overwhelmed if you take up spiritual ways and you do get real joy and definitely you can compare that joy with the joy which you get by contact with the worldly things So, Swami Vivekananda says, the new religion says that he is the atheist who does not believe in himself. Infinite strength is religion. Tell the truth boldly, all truth is eternal. Temples and churches, books and forms are simply the kindergarten of religion. so beautifully tolerant was shri ramakrishna that every sect thought that he belonged to it so religion has a very important role in our life it is what sustains us without religion one cannot sustain the life one gets frustration one will not be able to face the challenges and instead of getting happiness he becomes all the more miserable so importance of dharma and god is dharma sthapak the establisher of religion the divine incarnations do various kinds of good to mankind but the central mission is the returning of religion in the hearts of the people that is uh, to make the religion occupy the central place in the hearts of the people that is their mission shri bhagavad gita in its uh, 16th chapter mentions several expressions and manifestations of the human spirit which are either daivi or asuri so by cultivating these qualities one can go in the path of liberation or one can bind himself an analysis made in the light of this grand elucidation of the bhagwan will help us to find out what a man's present place is in the field of religion or in the province of irreligion shri ramakrishna explains the position of man man is born in this world with two tendencies the tendency to pursue the path of liberation that is called vidya the second one the learning or leaning towards worldliness and bondage that's called avidya what is vidya the vidya is spiritual knowledge is called vidya anything other than spiritual knowledge is called avidya avidya leads one to more ignorance whereas vidya leads towards light so shri ram kne explains this at his birth when a man when a man is born both these tendencies are as it were in equilibrium 
like the two scales of a balance. The world then places its enjoyments and pleasures in one scale and the spirit its attraction in the other. If the mind chooses the world, the scale of avidya becomes heavy and man gravitates towards the earth. But if the mind chooses the spirit, the scale of vidya becomes heavier and pulls him towards God. That means mind plays a very important role. How much care and attention you must give towards your mind. Religion is like science. If one performs spiritual disciplines, the result is bound to come. Although one may be practicing mechanically, if one persists in time, one will get everything. Religion is, as Swami Vivekananda said, a matter of realization and experience. Before realization, the intellect rules. Be His, that means God's, absolutely and forever. In body, mind, soul, be His. In that becoming, everything that religion means and is will be realized. By becoming His only, do you reach the goal of all human duties and responsibilities. By serving the lowly and the downtrodden as Shiva himself, God himself, one has one's own heart purified. In the pure heart, the Lord manifests himself of his own accord. And you feel that. Sri Ramakrishna used to feel, I am seeing Divine Mother in my heart all the time. All the time. And she was, that's why Sri Ramakrishna was always cheerful, because she was always having the vision of the Divine Mother in his heart. Every one of the religions speaks thus. No man who has not true love towards God can be religious. Religion begins when attraction towards God is greater than the attraction towards the world. If there is anything really difficult, it is to practice religion. Without the Lord's grace, progress is impossible. A harsh word upsets our mind. To practice religion with such a mind. So you must have tremendous control over the function of the mind. How far mind is under your control, to that extent you will be able to practice religion properly. The essentials of religion are principally two. Self-knowledge and self-control. Always mixing with the world and identifying ourselves with the body, we are prone to forget religion which awakens us to the real state of affairs which we are in and opens to us the gate of eternal bliss and keeps us away from being drawn down to the abject life of animals, doing nothing but eating and drinking and making merry. Such being the case, there must be something that will occasionally remind us as to who we are and what we should do so that we may not be altogether forgetful of our duties here. It is religion that fulfills this purpose. So, religion is a struggle of spirit against matter. So, we must have the clear 
concept of religion. And you must take it up in a very planned way. Do it in a planned way. Practice religion. Hold on to spiritual ideas. Read the life stories of saints and teachers, spiritual masters. And try to be honest and simple and sincere in your pursuit. Definitely you'll be able to enjoy real happiness even in this life. It gives you an idea and you feel remarkably blessed so that you could practice religion. As I said earlier, God's grace is necessary to turn the mind towards Him. By self-effort, we should be able to turn the mind towards God and serve the humanity with love and kindness, have tremendous sympathy and follow all the ethical and moral disciplines, then certainly you will get the maximum benefit of religion. As Sri Ramakrishna has said, religion is intensely practical, it is being and becoming, it is a manifestation of divinity already in every one of us. And with this background, you should be able to realize God in this human life. Page 718, Sri Ramakrishna said, You see, they have come to bathe in the holy river and yet they indulge in all sorts of worldly talk. The master began to look intently at the younger Narain and went into Samadhi. Did he see God himself in the pure-souled devotee? The devotee silently watched the figure of Sri Ramakrishna motionless in Samadhi. A few minutes before, there had been so much laughter in the room. Now there was deep silence as if no one were there. The master sat with folded hands as in his photograph. After a short while, his mind began to come down to the relative plane. He heaved a long sigh and became aware of the outer world. He looked at the devotees and began to talk with them of their spiritual progress. Master said to the anger Narain, I have been eager to see you. You will succeed. Come here once in a while. Well, which do you prefer, jnana or bhakti? The younger Narayan answered, pure bhakti. Master said, but now, but how can you love someone unless you know him? Pointing to him with a smile. How can you love him unless you know him? To him, Sri Ramakrishna said, since a pure-souled person, has asked for pure bhakti, it must have some meaning. One does not seek bhakti of one's own accord without inborn tendencies. That is the characteristic of prema bhakti. There is another kind of bhakti called jnana bhakti, which is love of God based on reasoning. To the anger Narain, Sri Ramakrishna said, Let me look at your body. Take off your shirt. Fairly broad chest. You will succeed. Come here now and then. Sri Ramakrishna is telling him, You will succeed. Sri Ramakrishna was still in the ecstatic mood. He spoke tenderly to the other devotees about their future. Master said to Paltu, you will succeed too, but it will take a little time. To Babu Ram, Sri Ramakrishna said, Why don't I attract you to me? 
it is just to avoid trouble to mohini mohan shri ramakrishna said as for you you are all right there is a little yet to be done when that is achieved nothing will remain neither duty nor work nor the world itself is it good to get rid of everything as shri ramakrishna spoke these words he looked at mohini affectionately as if scanning his inmost feelings was mohini really wondering whether it would be wise to renounce all for god after a while shri ramakrishna said god binds the bhagavat pandit to the world with one tie otherwise who would remain to explain the sacred book he keeps the pandit bound for the good of men that's why the divine mother has kept you in the world now shri ramakrishna spoke to the young brahmin master said give up knowledge and reasoning accept bhakti bhakti alone is the essence is this the third day of your stay here brahmin replied with folded hands yes sir then shri ramakrishna said have faith depend on god then you will not have to do anything it yourself mother kali will do everything for you jnana goes as far as the outer court but bhakti can enter the inner court the pure self is unattached both vidya and avidya are in it but it is unattached sometimes there is a good and sometimes a bad smell in the air but the air itself is unaffected once vasudeva was about to cross the jamuna the gopis also were there they wanted to go to the other side of the river to sell curd milk and cream but there was no ferry at that time they were all worried about how to cross the river and vyasa said to them i am very hungry the milk maids fed him with milk and cream he finished almost all their food then vyasa said to the river o jamuna if i have not eaten anything then your waters will part and we shall walk through it so happened the river parted and a pathway was formed between the waters following that path the gopis and vyasa crossed the river vyasa had said if i have not eaten anything that means the real man is pure atman atman is unattached and beyond prakriti it has neither hunger nor thirst it knows neither birth nor death it doesn't age nor does it die it is immutable as mount sumeru we shall stop here any questions you are welcome to ask so the purest form of religion has been given to us by shri ramakrishna that is practice don't divert your attention to anything else other than practicing the spiritual values there is no point in entering into unnecessary argumentation and entering into all sorts of debates getting mind more and more confused so if you are very simple if you are very sincere you are sure to get god and religion paves the way for you whatever religion you may follow it doesn't matter it takes you to god shri ram krishna gives the example there is a house the drawing room where generally visitors are meant to sit and the master of the home would come and meet them 
there are so many ways to come to the drawing room one can come from the main door one can reach the drawing room through the side doors one can even reach the drawing room from the back door back door of the home but generally the back door is not used what shiram meant was all paths lead to the same place whether you come from back door or whether you come side doors whether you come front door you are coming to the drawing room only why do you quarrel oh he should have come from the back door and this man would say oh he should have come from the side door it is useless to talk about like that you come in whatever way you want to come then the matter ends realize the truth enjoy the glory then share that joy with everyone that's all what is wanted sharing the spiritual joy that's what vedanta preaches vedanta always dwells on principles there is no place for dogmatism or fanaticism in vedanta vedanta is a philosophy you have to adopt this way finished so purest form of religion is presented in vedanta and vedanta is the purest form of hinduism that's all so be practical and practice it that's what shri ramakrishna says talk less practice more show it everything in action show it by doing then simply if you say you have to be kind you have to be kind be kind and show some actions wherein you express that quality of kindness if you simply say kind 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 what does it mean unless you give practical effect of it you have to be you have to be acting you have to be acting so precept and practice should go together that's what shri ramakrishna the glory of shri ramakrishna is what he says he himself has done it he means what he says so there is coordination between what he says and what he acts so we should be like that it's possible if you are aware of what you are doing if you are aware of your thoughts if you are aware of your the movement of your mind if you are aware of your association if you follow certain methods even the impossible becomes possible even the most difficult becomes most easy it all depends upon how we look at it how we do it that's all so shri ramakrishna is here every bit of spiritual practice he has shown us and asked us to do any question no question <laughs> clear all right we'll stop <laughs> like that chant the name of the lord and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire worldly lust raging furiously within Oh, name streamed down in moonlight on the lotus heart, opening its cup to knowledge of thyself. O oh, self, drowned deep in the waves of his bliss, tasting his nectar at every step, bathing in his name, that bath for weary souls. Various are thy names, O oh Lord, in each and every name thy power resides. No times are set, no rites are needful for chanting of thy name. So vast is thy mercy, how huge then is my wretchedness, who find in this empty life one heart, no devotion to thy name. O may mind be humbler than a bed of grass, be patient and forbearing like a tree, take no honor to thyself, give honor to all, chant and say singly the name of the Lord. O Lord and soul of the universe, mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue, the playthings of lust or the toys of fame, as many times as I may be reborn, 
Grant me, O Lord, a steadfast love for Thee. A drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is Thy servant, O sweet one. In Thy mercy, consider him as just beneath Thy feet. Ah, how I long for the day when the instant of separation from Thee, O Lord, will be as a thousand years, when my heart burns away with its desire and the world without Thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at Thy feet let me be in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of Thy arms, nor bewailing the trial of Thy presence, though it tears my soul asunder. O thou who stillest the hearts of thy devotees, do with me what thou wilt, for thou art my heart's beloved, thou and thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers, may all realize what is good, may all be actuated by noble thoughts, may all rejoice everywhere. May all be happy, may all be free from disease, may all realize what is good, may none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous, may the virtuous attain tranquility, may the tranquil be free from bonds, may the freed make others free. May good be at all people, may the sovereign side richly, richly rule the earth, may all beings ever attain what is good, may the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds pour rain in time, may the earth be blessed with crops, may all countries be freed from calamity, may holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied, for he being pleased, the Holy One becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied.